All right, hello and welcome back to Ravenwood Acres. Today we're gonna to close out our emergency communication series with part nine, where we're gonna talk about the T-Beam LoRa devices that use Nestastic software. Uh, before we get too much into that, hey. Hey, if you're new here and you're uh, finding value in the content we're creating, please subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up. Uh, check out our website, theravenwoodacres.com. You can also connect with us via our other social media links, which are linked below. If you're already a subscriber, thanks for your support. Okay, so as we've moved through this series and part eight, I talked about mesh networks and I showed you kind of in the beginning of these, I had not employed them yet because they required these screens to be uh, soldered on. Um, we'll talk barriers and that's one of them, but um, as we move along in this series, the whole point of this series was to give people some options to explore some solutions, to increase their comms readiness, increase their overall preparedness. And we use the acronym PACE, Primary Alternate Contingency and Emergency, to develop our communications, emergency communications plans. We can use that acronym for anything uh, we want, but in this world today, you know, usually our primary form of communications anymore is a cell phone, right? That relies on a network of um, towers to communicate around the world for that matter. Um, and cables that go under the ocean. So <laughs> there, there's, um, there's a lot to that infrastructure and that network. Well, these offer, right, off-grid communications Two-way line of sight radios offer that off-grid communications, right? They don't require a network to operate. Um, GRMS is still my go-to. Uh, my number one, I would recommend for anyone that's wanting to increase their preparedness and develop a communications plan. If they're not, if they know that that barrier of taking a test to get an FCC license to use amateur radio is not something that their whole group is willing to do, whether that's family, whether it's whoever, whoever they were trying to talk to, as we talked about in previous videos, if they're not willing to do that, then that's not a, that's not a solution. That may be, you may still go get your license so that you can talk to people outside your group and monitor and be able to communicate with people, you know, potentially around the world, depending on what license you get and what equipment you're willing to uh, purchase and employ. Um, GRMS is that, off the shelf solution that most people are fairly comfortable with because you can hand someone a, a little radio and just you know change the channel turn it on and or turn it on change the channel and push the button they know hey we're supposed to be talking on channel 15. yeah you do have to pay the fcc uh, a fee to get your grms license but you don't have to take a test these don't require any of that they just require you to buy the device and download an app on your phone yes i said app Okay, so as I said, GRMS is still uh, a part of that. I think if you're you're just entering this space, the first thing you should do, you know, after you've done your due diligence and research and decided, made some decisions of what barriers you're willing to um, you're overcome, you go out and you get yourself set up with GRMS radios. Then you start exploring other options. And I'm gonna say your number two option should be considering this, and yes, that barrier might be the fact that this device looks a little intimidating because it's a circuit board with a little antenna and it's got a little battery on the back and kind of looks nefarious maybe, uh, <laughs> but it's not. Um, so, and we'll talk, sorry, I'm just looking at what it said there. Okay, um, <clears throat> and we'll talk that as we move along here. So these T-beam, Devices run around $35 to $45 each from places like AliExpress, Banggood. You can get them. They are on Amazon. Uh, per other recommendations from other YouTubers that have talked about these, uh, I chose not to get them off Amazon because they people have mentioned having issues with them not showing up and so on and so forth. Most of the time, the seller that's selling them on Amazon, it's just a it, it, they're a third party to that whole thing. They're buying them from AliExpress. But they're not actually buying them until you until you order it through them. So that you're still going to wait the lead time um, of 30 plus days for it to travel by slow boat from China to you know a U.S. port, and we all know there's a lot of issues there. So 
I just ordered from AliExpress. I ordered two with the screens that required being soldered and sell those in part eight. Um, and then I uh, ordered two with the screens already soldered on. You paid a little additional more. I think I paid around 45. So these things cost just about as much as it does to get set up on um, GRMS. So two, if you like GTX series of the Midland radios range from about 80 to, you know, 85, maybe 90 for your, your the base models. And then they go up to about 130, if I remember correctly, uh, depending on the type type of ones you want to get they i think they do have some that are a little bit uh cheaper but i would recommend the gtx series because i have several of them and they're great little radios they're durable they're waterproof so on and so forth so um so if you're willing to get past that if you don't want to save a little money and you know solder learn how to solder if you don't already know and buy the tools and so on and so forth you can get them pre pre-soldered ready to go the only thing you're gonna have to buy is 1860 battery because of course that's going to cost you a little bit more too i ended up getting a, a two pack of those i need to order some more um it came with a charger but once you get this battery in here i don't recommend removing it uh, unless you need to because that thing is really tight in there so if you look right here there's a micro usb port for charging that gives you the option of hooking up uh external battery pack like a you know a like anchor you know power pack or um, potentially a solar charging setup. Uh, there's there's quite a few options there. Uh, so kind of just use your imagination and <laughs> go with it. Uh, so what do these offer that that you're not gonna get from some of your other comm solutions? Um, well, for the most part, you're not gonna get uh, SMS messaging and GPS locations and secure comms through your, any of your other options. You're definitely not getting it with GRMS. Now you can get the location feature if you're willing to spend upwards of $350 to $550 for the Garmin, their uh, Rhino 700 series um, that have the, that's a, that's a GPS with a radio built in. Uh, and they're pretty cool, but holy moly, you know, if you buy two of those, even the cheaper ones, the $350 ones, and you're, you're already at $700. Uh, those that are willing to go into the ham world, you, you can get set up pretty nice with you know depending on obviously what you're trying to buy but uh for seven hundred dollars so um so yeah that's i mean even my my anytone uh 878 which is a G, uh, a dmr digital mobile radio that that offers some uh gps features and so on and so forth is was 250 dollars so for a, a handheld radio and yeah it doesn't have a built-in gps map program but uh, anyhow, <laughs> I don't want to get too much off on that. So these are just, I think they're going to, they're going to continue to grow in popularity. There's, there's a, I think there's a niche here that, uh, an entrepreneur out there might, might consider, uh, we'll talk that in the closing thoughts, but, um, I'm going to show you the SMS messaging here in the screen. It just looks like any other SMS messaging. So we talked barriers, right? And barriers, we talked about the, the unwilling to learn and, take a test because it's just that's just not your thing whatever it is to get your amateur radio license um the imitate imi imitation wow intimidation factor of looking at this looking device okay um but if you set it up if you're the one in your group or family that's willing to set it up then all you need is the app here right so the sms messaging app part right here <laughs> i always get that wrong um in the video you just download the app on your your family member's phone you connect it to the device and go okay now and then send them a message from your phone and they're like oh this this is this is normal i'm used to this uh, and then you show them the cool feature of the gps the map on there to where you can see where the other person is um or the other device is right so they're gonna be like oh well that's cool and it's simple it's just uh, like you know, like any other app out there they don't have to do anything else once you set it up for them uh so anyone in your even you know younger kids or something like that are gonna be like oh this is easy dad and you know i can i can do this so that if you're willing to get past this and then how intimidating that might look to some people um you could have all that and as i mentioned in part eight it's uh, aes 256 encrypted yes there is one weakness there the bluetooth connecting to the device um but someone's going to have to be 
really want and exploit you and be within Bluetooth range of you to be able to exploit that weakness, uh, they're not going to um, break that encryption. You, you know, no. It's I mean, for one, why? You know, what what is it that you're doing that someone's going to really want to? Uh, if you're doing something that bad, I'd you know maybe <laughs> you should consider a new line of work. Uh, anyways. Uh, direction finding if that was something you'd be like well yeah but someone could find me uh, if I was really worried about that and um, uh, so in the 915 megahertz so between 900 or 902 megahertz to 915 in the US that is um, there's a lot of wireless devices that use those frequencies because the FCC's is low power um, devices can work in that range without requiring any sort of FCC licensing or anything like that so there's a lot of wireless devices that use are, oh, that operate in that range, especially in around in the city, right? So it's going to be pretty challenging for someone to be like, oh, there they are. Um, so versus now if you're out in the middle of the country or something like that, it might be a little easier to, to find it. Okay, so, okay, so closing thoughts. Uh, as I mentioned, there's probably a niche out there for someone that's, uh, uh, you know, got that entrepreneur spark to start buying these in bulk and set them up with cases and stuff and selling them like more off the shelf ready to get maybe some people past that like that barrier of what the hell is that you know it's a, just a circuit board i need i'm used to having things all night and nice and neat and closed right uh for 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 me and ravenwood acres definitely going to be buying a few more maybe two more to have six total uh, some as backups or something like that. I'm going to be putting one in a waterproof case and test, kind of trying to set up a, a node there at Ravenwood Acres, ex outside somewhere high, maybe up in a tree, with a solar option or extra batteries. Haven't haven't gotten quite exactly figured out, but so follow along this series, or actually not this series, but just my channel. Uh, I'll be uh, probably working on that this fall. And uh, I'll definitely be sharing that as I actually employ these devices in everyday life. To s just run them through the test and see where I find issues. And see what kind of range I can get from them. So far, I've only done some limited testing in a urban environment. And I've, I've gotten over a, over a mile with one inside uh, my apartment here in South Korea. Um, and buildings in the way in between where I was and the furthest I went away. So that's just some limited testing I've done. I've already gotten over a mile. So pretty impressive. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.